Today I'm going to be casting this amazing ring using Soraya Tech Cast. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys, I get quite a lot of questions about using Soraya Tech Cast castable resin, even though in the past I have done a video showing how to use it. But in absolute fairness, I have to admit, I don't do things quite the same way as I did back when I made that video. So today, I'll give you an updated user guide and cast something for you in silver. So, if you hated all that hot and cold water washing, you'll be pleased to know that's a thing of the past. I'm challenging myself by casting this incredible ring designed by Eric Keller. In case you haven't worked it out, it's actually a surprisingly accurate representation of an orchid bee. And that's because Eric has a serious fascination with entomology. And if you're thinking that these are impressive photographs, they're actually rendered illustrations by Eric. In fact, if you're interested in digital animation, do check out Eric's YouTube channel. Soriotech Cast is a fairly easy resin to print with. You'll need to accurately dial in your exposure settings and I'd recommend using one or two good thick supports to properly anchor the print to the plate. But after that, medium and light supports will work fine. Personally, I tend to add lots of fine supports as this helps prevent sagging, an all too common side effect of longer exposure times. I used the Anycubic D2 DLP with these settings and full anti-aliasing. For me, it's the best fine detail printer I've tested, and it's ideal for things like jewellery. This resin is quite viscous. To combat this, it needs to ideally be between 25 to 35 degrees Celsius whilst printing. So an enclosure heater may well be required unless you live in a warm climate. But even with warm resin, keep the lift speed low. Soriatech recommend 50 millimeters per minute, though I've never personally had issues at 60 millimeters per minute. Cleaning the prints can be tricky, as this is fairly thick and gooey resin, and long spells in a washing medium could result in the details fading and blurring. So here's a tip I picked up from Soriatech themselves. Take an ordinary dry, clean paintbrush and gently brush over the entire area. This efficiently sops up most of the excess resin. Just rub the brush on a paper towel occasionally to remove the excess and keep going until you can clearly see your print and supports. Now is the time to remove those supports. I clip mine away, as ripping them free will only lead to damage that will need to be repaired. So a couple of minutes clipping saves time in the long run. With that done, brush again, removing the uncured resin until you can see the print become a little more matte. Now it's time for conventional cleaning in IPA or ethanol. Personally, I'd recommend an ultrasonic cleaner as these are very effective and only require around 30 seconds. Any more than that, and you risk damaging the fine detail on your print. From the alcohol solution, blast the print dry with one of these cheap mini airbrushes. They do a great job and remove the excess in seconds, though wearing a face mask is a must. Leave the print about 10 minutes to air dry and then look over it. Your print should ideally be fully matte. If there are any shiny areas, Brush them thoroughly, then wash in the ultrasonic again for another 10 seconds. This should do the job. When it comes to curing the prints, I have just two rules. The first is to cure very well. I'm talking at least half an hour under the UV lights, and more if it's a thicker print. The second hasn't changed from my previous video. Use vegetable glycerin. This is a pain, I'll be honest, but if you don't use it, 
and I've heard from people who claim that they don't, you do risk spoiling the casting. As I understand it, the print needs to expel oxygen during the curing process. You can't do this in fresh air or even underwater, as there's oxygen present and this can be pulled back into the print, and that can only spoil the finish of the casting. But if you suspend the print within vegetable glycerin, oxygen can get out, but none can get back in. Here you'll see I have a small bowl. This is lined with ordinary kitchen foil, which is made from aluminium or aluminum to our American and Canadian friends. The beauty of this stuff is it's one of the few materials that reflects UV light. So my hope and theory is that the UVs will bounce off the foil and catch the print from multiple angles, giving me better coverage. With that said, I'd still recommend rotating the print occasionally. The biggest problem with using glycerin is that the prints float. But you can easily get round this by using small weights like paper clips or washers. Once you're happy it's cured, clean the glycerin from your print with a quick air blast and another dry, clean brush. Follow this with 10 seconds in the ultrasonic cleaner and another air blast to finish. At this point, you should now have a fully matte print ready for casting. The beauty of this cured matte print is that it's easy to see small imperfections that can easily be sanded away with very fine sandpaper or maybe filled in with castable wax. I need to say at this point that I was challenged by a London-based jeweller to have a go at casting something inside a small dental flask. Now trust me, this is tiny leaving barely any room for misalignment. But this does reduce investment usage and can lower burnout times. And I do like a challenge. That should do it. Now it's just a case of casting it as you would a wax object. Actually, now is a good opportunity to discuss a point that I'm often asked about the Kayacast vacuum system. Folks are used to seeing me use perforated flasks, but the Kayacast will work with ordinary dental flasks, unless it's operated by an idiot. Listen carefully. That's the sound of the bottom being sucked from the flask. Now, don't do this at home. It's usually advised to leave at least half an inch or 12 millimeters of plaster covering the print. If you don't, it can blow out, as it did here, which is a shame as the casting looks pretty good. Obviously, this small flask was trickier to use than I thought. So I turned to Fusion 360 and incorporated the sprue into the print itself. If my maths was correct, it should work fine this time. Well, it worked. But clearly I didn't leave enough sprue length as there's an ugly blob on the band. I think next time I'll just sprue to the inside of the band. And straight from the magnetic polisher, here it is. And I'm thrilled with it. The resin clearly captured plenty of detail from the original STL and it burned away very cleanly. So that's it guys, a very handsome design thanks to Eric Keller, 
and a beautiful print and cast thanks to Soraya Tech Cast. In a few weeks' time, I'll be doing a similar video about using Soraya Tech True Blue Castable Resin. And hopefully, with that one, I'll actually be giving away some bottles of resin. So do look out for it. In the meantime, guys, take care and thanks for watching.